which is presented by Dr. Tunga Salthammer. He is a professor in the Fraunhofer Institute in, in Germany. He's the department head and also the deputy director of the institute. Also, he is the new president of the ECAC Academy of Fellows, and he's going to be talking about very volatile organic compounds. So please help me in welcoming Professor Salthammer. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, to be honest, I feel a little bit tired. But uh, I had a night to remember yesterday, and uh, I'm from Germany, <laughs> so uh, it was not too bad. Uh, I will uh, this morning talk about uh, the group of very volatile organic compounds. They are not really in the focus of uh, indoor-related research so far. We all know about VOCs and uh, a lot about SVOCs now, but uh, the the uh, let's say the very volatiles are, are, are catching up now, and I would like to report you a little bit what, what kind of compound this is and how they can be defined. Uh, how's, how's this working? Okay, why uh, do we need to distinguish between volatile compounds and very volatiles and VOCs and SVOCs and, and so on? This is a uh, figure I've published about, uh, I think, uh, 10 years ago or nine years ago, uh, because we are interested, as indoor scientists, we are interested in uh, where, the, where the compounds are in the gas phase or on airborne particles or accumulate on sedimented dust. And this is important how we are exposed to these compounds by inhalation, by uh, oral or dermal. And I said this is a little bit old, and uh, people like Charlie make our life a little bit more complicated. Well, because we have learned now that uh, gas phase uh, chemicals or uh, the chemicals attached to particles, uh, we are always exposed via the dermal, uh, dermal uh, probably via the dermal route. We recently did some very nice experiments in uh, at DTU, and I hope we can report the results, not on DVOCs, but on uh, some SVOCs soon. Well, um, the first definition of VVOCs, which is known to me, I had no, is this one. This is a WHO report from uh, 19, um, 1989. I'm not sure if uh, VVOCs appeared earlier in the proceedings of uh, indoor air from 87 or uh, 84 or so, but I had no chance to check this. They're not online. I have uh, asked Bernd Seifert about that, and he agreed. He said, as far as he knows, and he must know it, uh, this, is, uh, this is the first appearance of very volatile compounds, volatiles, and, and so on. And you see this definition here is not very clear, but this is, um, uh, this is not a mistake. Uh, uh, VVOCs are defined as compounds in the boiling range uh, lower than zero degrees Celsius and up to 550 to 100 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. And this was uh, more or less or based on how can, they, how can these compounds be measured. Well, this is, there are not, this is the only definition of uh, VVOCs I know so far. Oh, sorry. I said I'm tired. Uh, what do we have? I have checked the literature a little bit. I am not sure if it's, uh, if it's complete what I did. I'm, I'm open for any, any further su suggestions. We use EPA has a lot of definitions that, as far as I know, they only define VOCs. And this is quite old. This is volatile organic compounds means that any compound of carbon, you can read it yourself, and so on and so on, uh, which participates in atmospheric photochemical reactions, except those designated by EPA as having negligible photochemical react reactivity. And there's a second definition. Volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, are organic chemical compounds whose composition makes it possible for them to evaporate under normal indoor atmospheric conditions of temperature and pressure. This is not very precise. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's now an ISO standard, ISO 16006, and there's also no definition for VVOCs, but there is a definition for VOCs. And this is based on gas chromatographic analysis. And this says volatile organic compounds sampled on TNEX-TA 
which elude from a non-polar or slightly polar gas chromatic separation column between and including n-hexane and n-hexadecane C6216. Uh, I have also mentioned here the SVOCs because in Germany we have a labeling system called the AGBB, and this, uh, this system also defines SVOC in a retention gap between C16 and C2022. So from, from, from this, oh, I'm sorry for that, from this we could conclude that organic compounds eluding before an hexane are VVOCs, but I say they are not yet, not yet really defined. Uh, there are other definitions of, VVOC, uh, of VOCs, not, not VVOCs. I have found something from the California Department of Public Health from 2010. This is also based uh, on uh, gas chromatographic retention gap for TVOC, and they define, I don't know why, uh, uh, VOC or a TVOC between C5 and C17, which means pentane through heptadecane. Well, it's, uh, the, there's an old definition by the US EPA. This makes reference to the vapor pressure, saying uh, VOCs have a volatility of more than 0.1 uh, millimeter mercury, which is 13.3 pascal. And I found another, uh, the last one, uh, definition of VVC from the Committee on the Effect of Climate Change and Inequality and Public Health from 2011, and they say volatile organic compounds or species have high enough vapor pressure, higher, or I will show this, higher than 10 pascal. Well, this is more or less all, all what I have found. So what does it mean? So nobody knows what are VOCs and what are SVOCs. So what I've done, I have uh, checked the literature and I have checked uh, what, uh, what we have done. We have a lot of data on uh, building product emissions and indoor, um, indoor, indoor measurements. I've picked about, I don't know how many, 60 or so, 50, 60 compounds of, low, uh, of high volatility which might be important for the indoor environment. And uh, this is the upper boarding point rate here of the WHO definition. And, what you, and these, these compounds uh, representing open circles are no VVOCs according to the ISO 16000 standard. So, so you see there's a, st uh, there's a strong overlap between the two definitions. There is one compound here having a, a, a pretty high boiling point, but this is, um, this is um, VVOC. I don't remember exactly. I think this is chloroethanol. You can read it later in the paper if you're interested in that. But here are, are many compounds with a boiling point lower than 100 degrees, which are also no, uh, no VVOC, which are VOC by definition of the, um, of the ISO 16006. So you see, it is really complicated to distinguish between VOCs and VVOCs. Um, uh, by the way, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention this, all compounds all I mentioned here have a vapor pressure much higher than 10 pascal, so all have actually in vapor pressure higher, much higher than, than 100 pascal. Well, um, this is again the boiling point range here, what you see here, the compounds. I have now picked a few, just picked a few out of the 60. And this is our retention index, gas chromatic uh, graphic retention index here, and the red line is n-hexane, which is the lower, uh, which is the lower um, uh, the part of the, of the VVOC range. And you see there are many compounds here with a lower boiling point, diethylamine or dichloroethane here. This is all below C6, uh, but there are no VVOCs by definition. They are, uh, clearly, uh, they are clearly VOCs. Or here, let's see, pentanol has a higher boiling point, but this is a C5. This is, this is a C5 molecule. Please remember that many definitions or some definitions of VOC say everything below C6 is a VVOC. This is, this is not true. You can, see it, you can see it here. And there are many, many compounds. You can see it here. Uh, also with higher boiling point than N-hexane uh, that are VVOCs by definition. So the, the number of carbon atoms is not an argument and the boiling point is also not an argument. Uh, for the definition of uh, VVOC according to, this, according to this picture here. Well, uh, the problem with VVOC is 
that they cannot so easily be measured. We can measure VOCs. We have a standard method. The ISO defines that. We have TNEX. We have thermal desorption. And uh, then we have a GCMS. So, so our life is, life is quite easy. For the VVOCs, or let's say for the full spectrum of the VVOCs, we need different uh, analytical, analytical methods. We can sample them in canisters, as is big done here in the, in the US. You can sample also, you can sample many on solid absorbents. This is a stainless steel tube here. Most of you will be familiar with that. And then we have different absorbents available. Uh, which are suitable for a defined range of uh, molecular size, the C8, C20. This refers to the hydrocarbons. Uh, and you see that TNEX is not really suitable for, uh, for, um, uh, for VVOCs. You can do it. You can measure down to C5 or C4, but then you need a backup tube. But for the real um, uh, VVOCs, you need other, other absorbents, but then you have other, other problems, for example, water water retention here, and uh, I've got this from the Marcus Desorption and Accessory Consumer, a very nice, very nice book, gives you a lot of information about the properties of solid absorbance and thermal desorption. Well, you see you need, you might need different absorbents. Then we have, of course, the DNPH method. The DNPH method is very well known, it's a standard method. It is still, most of you will be familiar with the DNPH method, I think, H, uh, measured by HPLC. And here we see more or less the carbonyls. We see here the formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, acrolein, uh, acetone, and propanol, and so on, and so on. This is, uh, this is good for this group of compounds. But on the other hand, <laughs> as is uh, widely ne neglected, you always see acetonitrile, and you measure TNX and uh, DNP in parallel. It's a big mistake. There's a release of acetonitrile, also a VVOC, so be careful if you apply uh, the DNPH method in parallel to the, or you should always do it after, after TNEX sampling, otherwise you get in trouble because you see uh, there's another uh, THF and so you, can, you see these. But um, it, is more or less, uh, it is more or less standard now. But then they have some acids, especially formic acid, they can't be seen by uh, DNPH methods. It's difficult to see them uh, on TNEX. So there are, uh, there are different methods. We have a poster here, by the way. My colleague Eric Uda is a poster on the, uh, on the accurate measurements of uh, organic acids in, in, in the air. We use ion chromatography, which is uh, very good. We have developed a method for this and have really, uh, low detection limits. But you can also do it by gas chromatography if you have a polar, if you have a polar column available. And uh, then, finally, Charlie mentioned the method, PTRMS. Uh, I really like this method because it is suitable for many, many uh, interesting VVOCs and other compounds too, uh, methanol, acetaldehyde, acetonitrile, and ethanol, and so on, and so on. You can measure the acids. It is, it is very nice because you can measure online. Uh, it is very good for, for test chamber, uh, uh, detecting VVOCs and the VOCs in test chamber. Uh, there are problems with indoor air, uh, in real indoor air, if you have a multi-component uh, mixture of, of compounds, but for chambers. I will not go through the details of the, of the method, but uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very good method with very, very low uh, detection limits. Well, uh, what is early work on VVOCs? There is not too much. There's one paper I found uh, by, uh, from Switzerland by Rottweiler et al. Uh, this is the f uh, one of the few papers I've seen or who mentioned very, vol very volatile organic compounds in the title, but they only measure a few, I think, formaldehyde and maybe some or two other uh, of, of, of these compounds. And then Charlie mentioned his own paper. This is the Environmental Science and Technology paper from uh, 1992. And uh, he, he, just, he, he just said it. This is um, one of the first paper, to my knowledge, it is the first paper dealing with the formation of uh, very volatile organic compounds in indoor air. And you have seen this before. You know, I've stolen this from you, but you gave it to me. You gave it to me. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the same picture. Uh, you have the, uh, Charlie explained that you have the 
uh, unsaturated compounds here. And then you see uh, increasing amount, especially of acetaldehyde. This is why I've picked this, this paper. Acetaldehyde, I will uh, mention it later, is one of my, uh, my uh, the top, top VVOCs for uh, several, several reasons. So uh, Charlie explained that. There's, there are more papers, very good work, especially on indoor chemistry. In, you see that indoor chemistry, this is by Zhang et al. Uh, two years later, a similar paper on the limonene ozone uh, air chemistry. You see here also formaldehyde, which is of course a VVOC. You can see here the formic acid. Acetic acid is not really an, uh, a, a VVOC, by the, by the way. According to the ISO 16006 definition, it is clearly a, uh, um, it is clearly a VOC. But I'm here more interested, or I became more interested in this compound, uh, formic acid. A very good paper by, uh, very good paper by Zhang, et al. Well, we also did some work on the indoor indoor chemistry, and uh, uh, we saw many many VVOCs. This is our work from uh, 2007. We uh, on photocatalytic wall paint. We have published this in ESMT uh, a couple of years ago. Um, this, this paint here is not reducing the VOCs or the VVOCs in indoor air, it's producing VOCs and VVOCs in indoor air. The manufacturer was not too happy when we published that, to be honest. Uh, so if you have the paint, there's no, uh, no compounds in the, in the chamber. This is a chamber test. Chamber is em empty, and then you switch the light on, you see the concentration of formaldehyde, aseptic aldehyde, or acetaldehyde, and, uh, and some other compounds, VOCs and VOCs, uh, increase up to a level of 100 microgram per cubic meter. And this directly comes from the, from the reaction in the paint. There is no, no pollutants, there's no degradation process in the, in the air, or that this is, uh, these are all ingredients you find in the paint. So this type of paint is a as a strong, strong source uh, of, the, of many compounds uh, as long as the light is on. Well, there's a lot of interesting work in, you find in the literature on VVOCs, and I can also here in this presentation, I can also only mention a very, very few. This is uh, Coleman et al., a paper from 2010 on the formation of phosgene from the degradation of uh, pyrotroids permetrine and other, other compounds. So you have this small compounds. It is in very low, low concentration, but you can see it is, it is very good work. I like it, uh, I like it very much. Then you have here the formation of diethylamine and carbon disulfide from the, um, uh, from the degradation of this compound. Yeah, this is used as a, as, as a vulcanizing agent in, in rubber. For example, we have uh, a couple of years ago. This is not uh, the, yes, it, it is our work, but this is this is what you see here. This is a review paper we have uh, published in uh, 2007. You can find this in 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 there. Uh, then, very interesting, uh, methyl bromide is a, is an agent for fumigation, and uh, this uh, in in walls you find that many walls are full of sulfur. And under uh, and with a certain pH value, this forms H2S, and this reacts, reacts, and this forms methyl sulfide, and this is a highly odorous, uh, highly odorous compound. And then the last example I have, I have here, this is the degradation of uh, flame retardants. Uh, we have studied this uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, from the thermal degradation of flame retardants, you see many, many small molecules like this here, chloroethane. And I could add more and uh, many more samples. I hope that I will forget nobody when uh, when I submit the paper to uh, to, to Indo Air. Uh, if you if you really look at the at the literature, you can find so many good examples on VVOCs that are really important. Uh, for, uh, for the indoor environment. This is also, I forgot to mention that, a highly odorous compound. Well, uh, human, human breath is, or the humans, are also a strong source of uh, many VVOC. We heard a presentation on, uh, on exhaled uh, air yesterday. Uh, especially, uh, this is good work, but I start here with the work by Smith et al. 
a journal of breath research. You can, there are many, many papers on, uh, very good papers on uh, volatile organic compounds in human breath. You see that humans exhale a lot of uh, VUC, especially acetone and what uh, ethanol, uh, uh, isoprene, and of course ethanol here. And uh, this is on a long-term scale, about one month. This is short-term, what you see here. This is my breath, by the way, after the consumption of alcohol, lots of alcohol. I drank here a lot of Calvados, because Calvados, I do not like Calvados, by the way. I did it for science. But uh, the, uh, the um, Calvados was full of methanol, and we wanted to see the um, degradation of the alcohol, of the ethanol and the methanol. And you, say, and you can easily see it here. Uh, the, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is no, no uh, I had no uh, food or drinks. This is after the consumption of apples here, which are also a strong source of methanol. And this is after the consumption of, uh, of, of Calvados. Uh, you can, and uh, pretty high concentration of methanol and also acetic aldehyde. Uh, unfortunately, the instrument broke down after the half of the, uh, the probably too much alcohol. I don't, I don't remember that. As a, and, uh, but this, you see, this is short term, but you can see from this result that there are pretty high concentrations of many VVOCs in uh, the human breath. So what does it mean for uh, product testing? Uh, we do, uh, in our, our institute, we do a lot of... Um, testing of building products. And this is an OS, this is uh, OSB here. This is a typical, I don't go through the details. This is, um, this is a chamber testing, a one, one cubic meter chamber uh, thing. And this is after this uh, chromatogram is after three days. And uh, this is, uh, we have not measured that the red, red is the TVOC um, from N-hexane to uh, N-hexadecane. So TVC is defined within this gap. And what you see here are the usual suspects. Uh, many aldehydes, and here are a lot of uh, many terpenes. This is what you usually see when studying uh, OSB. And TVC is calculated from these compounds here, from here to here. But then you see, uh, you see here butanol, and you see, also see acetone, and here some other compounds. And if we go to the data, <laughs> Uh, there are some, there is acetone formic, there's formic acid, there is methylpropanol, metacrolein, and butanol. And if we sum that up, this is after three days and this is after 28 days, this makes uh, 10, 20% of the, uh, of the total amount of compounds. It depends how you calculate this. Uh, there's a currently, uh, for people who are interested, there's a big discussion how to calculate the TVOC, how to calculate the TVOC. Well, it's a shame, by the way, because we have TVOC and for more than 20 years now. And no one knows how to calculate, how exactly to calculate uh, TVOC. You can do it from the toluene response or you can do it from the individual response. Uh, of, the, of the compounds if, uh, if available. So, uh, but uh, it's not important here. What you see, this makes here in the beginning about 10, up to 10% and later uh, after 28 days, it makes about uh, 20%. But these are, uh, these VVC are not added to the TVC or to the, let's say to the sum value by definition. Uh, this is another example. This is not OSB, this is EPS. EPS is EPS ex expanded polystyrene. And I picked this because this is a completely different topic. Expanded polystyrene is full of blowing agent. And this is short term. Uh, I remember this. The other was, uh, let's say, long term, is about, uh, measures about one month. And this is about uh, from five hours to 48 hours. And here you can see these, all these blowing agents come out here, and they, you can easily see they make the major part of the spectrum of the, uh, of, of, of the compounds. There are some other, uh, styrene, of course, is uh, one of the major emittents, some other here. But you see here the sum of VVOC is about 6,000 after five hours, and the TVOC is about around 1,000, going down to 4,600. But here, VVOCs make the major part of these, uh, of these emission testing, but uh, again, per definition, they are, uh, they are neglected in the ISO uh, when uh, being calculated. 
So this is uh, this might be a problem. I do not say that these uh, compounds are uh, are, 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 are poisonous or, or, or whatever, but we should discuss this to include more and more VVUC into uh, into building uh, um, building product analysis and, uh, and and labeling stuff. Well, wrong direction again. So uh, I mentioned before that we do a lot of building product testing and we, that means we have a lot of data available. And these are the uh, VVOCs we at WKI frequently see. This is our, our list of top VVOC, which is acetaldehyde, butanol, ethanol, formaldehyde, of course, it is a VVOC, but formaldehyde is special. Methyl acetate and pentane and of course, Acetone, and they are not in order of importance here. They are simply in alphabetical order, so you cannot uh, derive a ranking list from uh, from this. Uh, five minutes, please. Exactly. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Oh, that's good. I, I will not discuss formaldehyde here. This is the classical VVOC. You can read about. There are many sources on formaldehyde, and you can read it if you like. There are published several papers on that. So I will skip formaldehyde here. This is, I mentioned it before, this is my uh, private top VVOC, acetic aldehyde. This is similar to, a little bit similar to formaldehyde. There are many, many, many sources of, of uh, acetic aldehyde by reaction. This is a nice study, by the way, uh, from, from Italy. They have measured about 30 houses, and this is outdoor air here, and this is indoor air here, and you see this goes goes up to uh, 35 microgram per cubic meter. This is not much, but, but the, uh, I think the amounts of, uh, of uh, acetic aldehydes are, in, are slowly increasing. There are many more papers on acetic aldehyde. I just, picked, uh, I just picked one here. And this is also very interesting compounds. I, I, I compound, I have no idea how many of you are familiar with uh, chloropropane. Currently a big discussion in Germany. It's also used as a blowing agent. And uh, uh, we see it in, uh, in daycare, in many daycare centers. These are not our data, these are data from the uh, city of Nuremberg. And uh, they are, there is really good in measuring these. The concentrations of this compound are, are pretty high. You see this is over years, this is measured over years. And if you do not remove the source, this is done here, you can do what you like, installation of ventilating fan and so on. The concentrations of this compound remain on a very, very high level. And only if you remove this, uh, uh, the source, the concentrations slowly, uh, slowly go down. But maybe this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this problem will uh, disappear because I've heard that the company has substituted or the companies using it have, have substituted this compound. And finally, this is not related to human health, this is related to the museum environment. We are doing a lot of work, or let's say my colleague, Alexandra Schiewek, uh, does a lot of uh, work on uh, air pollutants in the museum environment, and formic acid is there one of the bigger problems, especially for the metals, uh, metals lead and, and, and alloys like bronze. You can see here, we have measured storage rooms and uh, exhibition rooms, the concentration of formic acid are, are really high. This is, the, this is the range we have measured and you can see here in the display case, the concentration goes up to 600, 650 microgram per cubic meter and then the coins, metal coins, after a while look like this one here. So uh, formic acid. So these are just a few examples uh, I would like to give. What about the guidelines? There are, in Germany, we have now plenty of guidelines for VOCs and TVOC and so on. There are just a few guidelines available for VVOCs. We have one for formaldehyde, for you know, from the, we have one for trichloroethane from the WHO. And in Germany, we have some guidelines for acetic aldehyde. We have discovered that acetic aldehyde might be a future problem, dichloromethane, which is very old, 1997, and aldehydes, but it is, it is complicated to explain, it is more or less a sum value, but it includes butanol, for example, and finally we have a guideline for chloropropane. I'm not sure if more guidelines exist, this is what I could find. Um, let me summarize that. Uh, 
little you have learned, or we all have learned, or I have learned when uh, putting this together, VVOCs are not clearly defined. Uh, there are definitions of VOCs based on physical properties, like volatility, boiling, boiling point, vapor pressure. Uh, they are scientifically sound based on molecular properties, but you've seen they're not really pragmatic. Then we have other definitions based on analytical properties, like the ISO. They are pragmatic, but they do not really consider volatility. Uh, there's also no clear definition what are SVOCs, by the way. It has nothing to do with talk, but if we talk about VVOCs, and um, that's, uh, say, that's no clear definition for VVOC, we can also say that there's no clear definition for SVOCs. That depends on boiling point and vapor pressure, except the ISO. But if we really need to strictly discriminate between VVOCs, VOCs, and SVOC for purpose of product emission testing, as the German labeling scheme, AGWB, is doing, or for indoor quality research, my personal opinion is on that, that the analytical definition is the only way to clearly distinguish between these different groups of compounds. Okay, I will close. The story will continue. And this a little reminded me Doctor Who. I have no idea who's familiar with Doctor Who. It's a TV series from England. I think it's also popular in the United States. If you go there and you ask, do you know Doctor Who? Every people say, yes, of course. I know. Uh, Doctor Who, by the way, is a science fiction, uh, is a, a traveler in uh, time and space. But if you ask the people, OK, who exactly is Doctor Who, nobody knows. Because the exact identity of the Doctor still remains unknown. But everybody talks about the series. And it's the same story with the VVOCs. We all talk about the VVOCs, the group of VVOCs, but we have no idea what VVOCs exactly are. We have no clear definition for that. Well, what I've said, what I uh, have here will be coming, hopefully, coming soon. Uh, there will be a special issue of Indoor Air. And many, many thanks to Hugo Lee and to Bill Nazarov, the editor of Indoor Air Journal, that I can be part of this. Uh, you can uh, see all this comp find all these compounds, uh, hopefully in this paper. And thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Tunga, for your excellent review, and we look forward to seeing this in press pretty soon.